Um, oh, it yeah. says you are live. Okay. Yep, you're live. All right. So, hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our live stream book discussion with Dorinda Jones tonight, where we'll be discussing Betwixt. Um, I'd like to welcome, yeah, we all got our copy. Dorinda was so nice. She sent us all copies. Isn't that Sign cool? Copies. Yeah. I know. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to say, hey, welcome to Jenny's Page Turners, My Dangerously Dark Darlings. We're on YouTube Live tonight. We're um, on our Isn't It Romantic Book Club. Um, we're in Midnight in the Garden. Hi, Midnight Garden. Um, and we're on Jenny's Facebook, my Facebook, Diana's Facebook. We are all over tonight. <laughs> So first off, I want to let you all know I'm Abby Rhodes. If you're new and you don't know me, um, I write dangerously dark romance. I tell people to think like an episode of Criminal Minds with a hint of paranormal meets a love story. Here's my little pal of books. And here's the cover of Capturing Fate. And that's release date is just announced. It is January 28th. Um, of next year, which happens to be the 28th anniversary of me and my husband meeting each other. Congratulations. So, yay. Congratulations. Sharon, you go now. Okay. Hi, my name is Sharon Ray. I'm the best-selling author of the Deadly Force Romantic Suspense series, a little pile of books. Um, In Search of Truth is the most current book out. I think like national treasure type plots with really hot romance. And uh, my next book, uh, Love's Last Kiss, should be out hopefully by Valentine's Day. So anyway, okay, Jenny. Is Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Martz, and I write uh, cozy mysteries. I write romantic comedies, and then I write, oh, just a couple of uh, hot hockey players. <laughs> so here's my uh, little fun stack of cowboy hotness. And my newest book is a spinoff of the Hockey Playing Cowboys, Same Town. Cowboys of Credence, uh, Credence Horse Rescue. And so this is a new Cowboy State of Mind book. Um, and I have fun news to share that this book actually just, Wish Upon a Cowboy, just won um, first place in the long contemporary category of the book buyer's best. Of Congratulations. So that's kind of exciting. Orange, It's Orange County's book buyer's best contest. Um, and I have the fun news of letting you guys know um, or reminding you uh, that we always love to do a little giveaway. So because we want you guys to comment, we want you guys to ask questions. We're seeing tons of comments. It's so fun seeing you guys. <laughs> so, happy to you. Um, so we're going to do a $20 gift card tonight for um, randomly picks one of the commenters of people that are commenting and asking questions tonight. So we're really Excited you're here, and we have such a fun treat for you. So, Diana, introduce yourself, and then you want to introduce our fun guest? I will, for sure. And we're also giving away a book from um, our, our next month's book. We're giving that away at the end, too. So, hi, everyone. Uh, Diana Mignot-Stewart here. I write Romantic Suspense. My Black Ops Confidential series is about a secret society of female vigilantes that Travel the globe, writing wrongs against women and the hot men that they fall for. And here's the third one. Got to get that in there. Um, I'm so excited about tonight. Oh my god! <laughs> we are here with New York Times and USA Today best-selling author Dorinda Jones. She's won numerous awards for her work, including a prestigious Rita, a Golden Heart, and a Daphne du Maurier. Her books have been translated into 17 languages. As a born storyteller, Dorinda grew up spinning tales of dashing damsels and heroes in distress for any unfortunate soul who happened by. Certain they went away for the better. She, performed, she penned the international best-selling Charlie Davidson series and is currently working on several beloved projects, most notably the Sunshine Vikram Mystery Series with St. Martin's Press and the Betwixt and Between series of paranormal women's fiction. She lives in the land of enchantment, also known as New Mexico, with her husband and two beautiful sons, the mighty, mighty Jones boys. Welcome, Dorinda. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. Hi, Dorinda. <laughs> Hi, Dorinda. Okay, my husband just ran down and pulled the door shut. So I saw. <laughs> <laughs> At least he was fully clothed. Was, yep. Plus, bonus. Very true. Dorinda, Hi, Dorinda. Go ahead, Jenny. 
Oh, I just was saying hi, Dorinda. Oh. <laughs> How are you? Thank you guys for having me. I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> We're so happy you're here. You know, I've been collecting questions from readers for the past week that they have for you. So I'm just going to jump right in with a couple of these questions. Okay. So Christine Stalvi, I'm not sure if I'm saying your last name right. I'm sorry if I butchered it. But she asked, what is your writer's kryptonite? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, so, like, pretty much your weakness. Anything shiny. Oh. Anything <laughs> shiny. <laughs> so, internet. So we're talking Facebook, um, YouTube. Yeah, anything shiny that glows and sparkles. <laughs> uh, I know about that. Yeah, right. Me too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bling. Yeah. This was such a delightful read. I have to tell you, I haven't read a book with an older uh, female protagonist before. I mean, I think that it's 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 kind of unusual. Um, what gave you the idea to write someone who had like such a, a backstory and had successes and failures and had all this wealth to draw from? Well, actually, what happened was a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, Robin Peterman. Mm -hmm. um, she had joined this uh, group who wanted to basically really launch paranormal women's fiction. I mean, it was already out there, but they really wanted to go big with it. And so she invited me into the group and there were 13 of us and uh, we called the fab 13. <laughs> and yeah, it, they kind of came up with the rules, um, older heroine, you know, like just little things. And then we could just go crazy because it's cool idea. Yeah. And it was so fun. It was so fun. And I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I didn't make her like old enough, but I mean, I don't feel, so I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm going to lay it online. I'm 55 and I don't feel 55. Mm -hmm. So I felt like my heroine, I don't know. I, I don't know that I made her old enough as far as her personality and stuff, but she is very much like me in many ways. So I totally cannibalized myself and <laughs> For I do not have any powers. I was not. Oh, oh my God, she was so much fun. I just love when she at got going. Tell us, at least that you can tell us about. Do what? You don't have any powers that at least you can tell us about. Right. <laughs> I to keep those with my secret identity. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I you love know, some of these comments here. Someone says, Teresa says, I couldn't fall asleep last night, so I thought. You know, she'd read one chapter of Betwixt and then couldn't fall asleep because one more chapter. <laughs> it is a completely bingeable book. Like it just, oh, you start and you just can't stop. Thank you so much. And I'm so pleased because it's got such a great reception. And I was really worried because, again, it, this is my first real foray into the indie world. And um, so I had to keep it kind of short. It's only like 60,000 words um, due to contractual obligations. Oh, I see. <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, mess anything up with my with my trad publisher. But um, yeah, I just, and it was so fun. It was just so, just to be able to write whatever and just, it was fun. Make it was a it a big book. difference from writing for your traditional publisher or? You know, not really. Only in that I, I think what happened when I was writing Charlie, I got very complacent because I knew the world so well and I mm -hmm. knew all the rules and I knew, you know, all this stuff. And so when I sat down to write Charlie, I mean, it was just, it just came out of me. I mean, she just, I, I was just Charlie when I sat down. So now mm -hmm. time I write anything else, it's, it's actually a little more difficult at first because I have to world build again, you know, and, and that's a whole thing and figure out all of my, um, my my magic system or or the paranormal whatever is going to happen, and um, so it's super fun, but also a, uh, very intimidating. <laughs> Did you do a lot of research for the world building? Because I just loved how it just came out in little bits and little bits, and then all just tied together at the end. You're like, oh, I just love that. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only I just made it up as I went, but the only. <laughs> To research a lot of and this is why I don't often do this so Charlie is set in Albuquerque and I've lived in Albuquerque for years I, I don't now but I did for years and but 
most of my other projects are set in fictional towns. Well, I set this one in Salem, Massachusetts. I've never been to Salem. And I didn't want to upset anybody from there. So I had to do so much research and a lot of um, Google Maps, you know, looking stuff up. And, oh, yeah. And um, doing virtual tours online and just things like that, just to get everything right. Um, and I'm so in love with Salem. I've decided I want to move there, even though I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> I can't convince my husband, though. He says, no, it's too cold. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you're so bad cold. <laughs> I've been there a bunch of times. It's beautiful. Really? It's beautiful. Oh. She's talking you into it. I know. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for you that I have been just dying to ask. So this is one of my favorite parts of the book. And I'm going to give a tiny bit of our backstory, Dorinda. So Dorinda and I met years ago. Well, I can't even remember how many years ago at this teeny tiny baby conference and hung out together and became best friends. Just so <laughs> everyone knows. Um, and I also met her sister. And my favorite part of the book is that you named your sister best friend character after your sister and i really want you to tell us about that and what annette thinks and how, does she love it or tell us about that and why absolutely. absolutely so what happened was it was so funny because in two of my series and i don't know how this happened i, I mean i do obviously i did it but <laughs> i have two different characters after our brother quentin so in the charlie books there's a quentin but he's he's fashioned after my oldest son who is uh who was born deaf and so he's very much my oldest son but i named him quentin just i don't know i just my son's name's weird i named it i don't whatever <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever i was coming up with the sunshine books my so my brother quentin is just hilarious he's the funniest guy you'll ever meet he's just he's everything out of his mouth he's so funny and so i really wanted him to be sunshine's sidekick so he's the best friend but i named him quincy well annette she was like you know what this is bs because i'm here every day i work for you and i was like oh, what? you're right and so i named i named her annette um do you mind a little tiny spoilers there's a little spoiler i'm about to spoiler away go ahead so basically, Annette is the best friend of Defiance. Um, but what is going to happen, and I didn't think of this. I, sh I didn't think of it. What's going to happen is Annette's actually one of the charmlings. And that's going to uh, be no. fourth book. So four, five, and six is going to be Annette's trilogy. Oh. Wow. Oh, my God. I didn't think of that because she's my sister, and now I have to write. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, awkward. <laughs> it's going to be really awkward. People are either going to gross out on me. I don't know what to do about it. To be told. Well, you know what? Change her name while you write it and then just do search and replace when you're done. <laughs> yeah. You know, there you go. writing the books, I don't, I don't really think it's in it. You know how you do? You're like, you might fashion mm -hmm. after somebody, but then it's still just the character. Yeah, yeah. It kind of is and, and kind of isn't. But a lot of her personality is very much Annette. Her curly hair. Um, she's just the cutest yeah. thing ever. She's just such a dear, dear person. And, and so, yeah, I'm very. And I'm that very, came across in your writing. I loved her. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I got to tell you, Dorinda, I read your books and I am constantly like I'm one of those people when I read, I go through and I highlight those just spectacularly neat sentences that like I'm blown away that anybody would even think to put those words down because they're so creative and unique. And like your books are just full of highlights because you. your words and just how you write and how your brain works. It's like if I could just have a quarter of that, you know. <laughs> I have read your books and they're awesome. Don't you even go there. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice of you. But oh my gosh. And just this book, it was just full of those amazing, amazing moments. Like where I'm just highlighting in my Kindle. Like it was just so, so good. So good. 
one of my absolute favorite lines was, is the kilt okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, I was thinking that, like, what happened to the kilt? <laughs> okay, speaking of that, a reader yeah, had a question. Yeah, about the, come yes, on. But hold on, a reader had a question. Dominique Cooper says she wants to know the guy, who was the guy that you were thinking about <laughs> when you wrote Roan? Because she wants something pretty to stare at. <laughs> I totally, he is 100%, I totally stole him. He's, he's a male model. Ooh. He is stunning, and he is one of those. I, I actually did this twice. I did this for the Sunshine Books too, and my my hero Levi, and then the hero in Betwixt and Between is Roan. Both of them were our male models now, but they were both um, kind of overweight and everything. And then they did this total transformation, and I just and just became absolute potties. I mean, just absolute potties. And I want to say his name is something Creek or McCreek. I can't remember. I'll look it up. I'll look it up because he's, I mean, even the ink, everything. It, it's him. I can, actually. It, it, Ooh, it. that's great. Well, send us the picture and we will drop yes, it. Send us the picture. <laughs> and what made you decide to go the kilt route? Like, I love the kilt. Yes. I don't know. I just love kilts. <laughs> Actually, the leather kilt. So there was a show that nobody saw, and I think it was called Outsiders. I think Outsiders, and it was about mountain people, and the, these other people were coming in, and they were trying to take their land for coal or oil or something. I don't remember. And it was actually a really good show. It had. Do you guys remember uh, Opie from Sons of Anarchy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He was in it, and it was a really good show. I really loved it the, the first season. Um, but there's a character in there who's just a little cutie, and he wears a leather kilt with these hiking boots type things. And I just loved it. And I was like, I am going to have a character that does that someday. Mm -hmm. That's where that's where he came from. <laughs> oh my, that's fantastic! You know, we have some people um, putting questions over here, so I want to get to some of those too. Uh, and I can't see their names for whatever reason, but someone has asked, um, are you writing more or less since the virus started? Well, you know what? At first, I admit it was less. Mm -hmm. I think that it really, the whole thing really just kind of, I don't know, kind of stressed me out in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that it would, but it really, really did. And it was depressing and, and just like freaking everybody out, including me. Well, I think change is hard and that even just that change. And even though I'm at home all day anyway, like it wasn't, but for some reason it really affected me. I don't know why. And I ended up being really late with Sunshine 2 and I was stressing and freaking out. And I ended up, I, I, now I write every day with um, uh, Jeffy Kennedy. So mm -hmm. Jeff writes uh, fantasy romance and we write every day now and it just, it just got me back in the group. And I wrote over 200,000 words in three months. Oh, wow. So oh, wow. but that's because I was super behind on my deadlines. <laughs> I had a <another> choice. <laughs> but yeah, and so now I'm, I've actually written more. But at first it was really difficult. It was weird. And so do you and Jeffy sprint? Is that your thing? We do. We, we do sprint. So we'll write for it. We get on Zoom every day. We'll write for an hour and then take a little break, write for an hour, and we do three one hour sprints a day. And she writes faster wow. than I do. Um, and, and I also outline, and she doesn't outline. And so she will write, she'll usually get right at 3,000 words in those three hours. Um, wow. I don't do that. I write 2,000 to 2,500 in those three hours, and it depends again. So right now I'm doing revisions, but before this I was actually outlining the third in the Betwixt and the Between series, and that took me about a week and a half. But still, it's just that getting in the habit again every day, mm -hmm. of sitting down and writing, and yeah. And I just listened to a little productivity podcast thing that you did for RWA, where it talked about that you like to write at night. So are you still writing at night? And tell us, come on, how did you write 20,000 words in one day? You know what? That was like the weirdest thing because I've never done it again. I only did that one time. Oh. It's just <laughs> one of those weird things. Now, I, 
I have written, I wrote, I wrote eighth grade. I wrote in seven days. So <sighs> I can write fast when I have to. Um, I wrote ninth grade in nine days, hilariously. Wow. 10th grade in 11 days. So, you know what I mean? But that was, that's after I've outlined. So I outline okay. and I just write like crazy and I'll get like 10 to 12,000 words a day, usually sometimes more. But one time, one time I wrote 20,000 words and I was just like, it was like celebration time. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's one of those. were exhausted though. Were yeah. you exhausted? It's horrible. It's horrible. And I don't recommend it. And that's again, why I'm changing my evil ways. I'm writing every day now. I'm not doing that anymore because I can't, it's exhausting. You're right. It's, right. Right. It is. It's exhausting. It's almost, it's almost a form of it. it you develop a form of PTSD in a while, after a while, mm -hmm. because you, know you have to write in this amount of time and then you procrastinate even more because you know, it's coming. Right. So I don't recommend it highly. Yeah. highly recommend it. <laughs> well, we have a, um, another reader and I'm sorry, I can't read your name. It's not showing up on our comments, but it says, do you have a favorite place to write your books? I do. Uh, and it is in, yes, this way, but that recliner right there. <laughs> that's cool. I sit there with my laptop and, and write and, that's what I do. <laughs> is, that, is that a Harry Potter scarf on the chair? It is. I have Harry Potter on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sharon. <laughs> oh, I have them all over the house. My kids have Harry Potter stuff all over the house. <laughs> we, had, we have another question that I got from Kathleen Watson, and she wanted to know, um, did you know the whole arc of the Charlie Charlie stories when you started, or did you just know, like, this is going to happen and do you have any advice for somebody planning in a giant arc like you did with her books? You know, what's weird is that I had some of it figured out and I had my ending. I knew how I wanted it to end. I mean, literally from like day one, I had my ending. I don't know why. And it mm -hmm. ended that way. That's how I ended it. Wow. Um, but all the stuff in the middle. No, I didn't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, I knew, I knew like, well, like with the sunshine books, I definitely, it's just a trilogy. So I definitely needed to know my character arcs, you know, the big picture. I apologize. Can you guys hear that? My dogs came in and opened the door. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a lot in there. Okay. Um, so, you know, I would just say, but again, like per book, it. I just had to figure out, yeah, and, and keep within that arc because mm -hmm. I didn't know how many books there were going to be. And so I just kept going and writing the mysteries and, and that's Are you writing multiple books at the same time. I, I will, you know, I try to focus on one at a time just mm -hmm. because I don't, I feel like it just takes me longer. Um, but I have been known to work on one in the morning and work on another one that I shouldn't be working on in the afternoon. Um, and that sort of thing. And again, because I'm writing in the morning now, which I've never, never done not for any length of time um, i'm usually a night writer uh but yeah i just just try to stick with it and and write every day and then keep that art going and figure out how not to mess it up and <laughs> that's a big part of writing just don't mess it up <laughs> mm -hmm. and so do you feel like is charlie really really done um so Basically, for those of you who don't know, um, I put out a, a novella for A Thousand and One Dark Nights, and that was Garrett's story. And so we learn what happened with Osh, what happened with B, and what happened, what's up with Charlie and Reyes. We learn that in that novella. Um, so Charlie and Reyes, for the most part, yes, are their side characters now. Um, but I am going to do a Beep and Osh series. So the world will come back, you know, and they're in it, they're in it, just so you know, but it's going to be, you know, Beep and Osh's story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's exciting. How do I put a picture? Is there a way to put a picture? You can hold it up to the camera or... 
Um, no, it's on my on my computer. I was just gonna. Um, oh, and a reader said that the guy's name is Creekman. Okay. Ooh. So you know we're all gonna rush out as soon as this is over and look up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not savvy enough to be able to tell you how to, to how to share. <laughs> I don't Sorry. know. I can share a picture, but I don't know how. You can share it to one of us after, and we'll post it in there. That sounds good in the comments. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. And when um, someone asked about the mass market paperback, so typically a mass market paperback is about eighty thousand to ninety, eighty, ninety thousand words. So they yeah. were kind of asking, how does the thousand words compare to? Right. And next you said was about 60. Yeah, that's about 60. Most yeah. Charlie books are right at 95. So yeah. I think I, we write yeah. about, this is about 95,000, I think. Yeah. Sharon writes yeah. every, she every, every time. Mine are like 130. Yeah. And mine are like 85. Wow. Yeah. So mine are 85, yeah. Well, Sunshine 2 came in at 125, which I've never written. Wow. wow. Did so, you write that in like two days or? <laughs> <laughs> and my editor was like, yeah, maybe we should cut that back a little bit. And I've never had to cut ever, mm. ever. Oh. So know how to cut. Well, she, God bless her. She went through and she just cut little things, just little snippets here and there. And mm -hmm. when she cut it down, she cut 10,000 words like it was nothing. I was like, wow. Okay. Oh, that works. Great. Yeah. She did all the work for me. <laughs> right. It's easier when they don't write all those words. Yes. Yeah. 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 Not attached to them. Right. Very, exactly. I love my words. I'm like, wait, you I know these words? Really? Because I really like these words. <laughs> so we have someone asking, have you ever asked your readers to help pick out names of characters or places for your books or a uh, book you write? I have. I've asked for names. Um, I have asked, what have I asked for? I've asked for several things before. Um, I, it, or I'll do a poll and or something like that. Um, I think I did a poll with, so in the Sunshine Vikram series that my fictional town is called Del Sol. Mm. And I did a poll for that because everything, I don't know why I just did this weird thing. So every main character, their names, first, middle, and last, either means the sun in some language or has something to do with the sun. Oh, cool. so I the town to, to reflect that. So the town mm -hmm. is called Del Sol. Um, and yeah, so that was, I did like a poll for that. But I do ask, I ask my readers stuff all the time, all the time for little things. Oh, and I asked them because they were coming up with, Annette was trying to come up with a name for their business. Uh, and oh. Yeah. Um, I asked for the names, and so I got some really good ones. And you are so that. creative. I do, yeah, little things like thank you. <laughs> um, oh, there are, sorry, go okay. ahead. <laughs> there was a, re a reader asking what you like to read and what book you've read that you recommend, and what's your like comfort author? What author do you mm -hmm. always go back to? I go back to, I have several books that I go back to and read, but I read, I'm very eclectic. I read all over the place. Um, I love historical romance. Um, Julia Quinn's Bridgerton series is still, mm -hmm. The Duke and I is in my top, is probably my favorite book ever. I, I just, wow. Um, but I also read, and I have this word, I love uh, Sandra Brown's Envy. I don't know why. It's just that book that I go mm -hmm. back to listen to an, on audio but because the guy's voice oh my god yes i've had that one yeah oh my goodness and i see what else there's there's several that i reread over and over and of course i can't think of them now but yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> lover awakened by jr ward oh, oh my gosh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's my favorite. oh my god i love sadist um mm -hmm. yeah there's just i do have several that i go back um and just reread. I love Stephen Hunter. Um, yeah. Anyway, I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, who? Another um, reader asked, "Who inspired you to become a writer, or what did anybody inspire you?" You know what? I yeah. I started making up stories, writing, 
pretend writing when I was five. And it's always been in me. I used to write, I, I wrote plays for the neighborhood kids, but this was before I could read and write. So I would give them blank pieces of paper and say, just follow the script. <laughs> <laughs> we would, would go around selling tickets in our apartment complex and yeah, nobody bought tickets from us. And yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, it, it just, I've just always written. And then I, I would write anything, anything growing up. I would write newspaper articles, poems, song lyrics. It's just so ingrained in me. And when I was mm -hmm. in school, uh, my best friend, she was like, you know, you always come back to writing. Why don't you just be a writer? And I was like, you can't be a writer. First of all, I'm not a genius and I'm not an alcoholic. You have to <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, in all my heart, I thought that you had to be one of those two to be a writer. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, how many of us have our alcohol with us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And my problem, I actually can't drink alcohol. I'm a wuss. I get sick instantly. So oh, wow. I always feel like I'm always missing out because everybody's always having these beautiful glasses of wine or these beautiful cocktails. And I'm like, oh, I just want one so bad. Okay, you, you got the genius end of it. And Diana and I have the alcoholic end of it. Right? <laughs> we can make this work. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be nice. I wish. <laughs> so I love this question from Debbie. She says, if you can bring any character to life, who would it be and why? That's a great question. I would absolutely just Charlie Davidson because I yeah. just, or, she's my first, I mean, she's my third, it's my third complete manuscript that I wrote was Charlie. And, but I just love her. And like I said, I would sit down to write her and like, I was just her. I didn't even have to think about it, you know, and just, I love how irreverent she is because yeah, I'm too. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not, you know, and, and she just says whatever she wants to say and who mm -hmm. doesn't want to do that, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I probably Charlie. You know, I had a question, um, a, a reader asked, Michelle Byfield asked, um, how did you keep yourself motivated until you had your breakout books with Charlie? Well, again, I, it was <laughs> in me and, and I just, I just could not not write. Mm. That was part of it, you know, and when I, and again, I never thought I could be a writer. And then um, I went to, I ended up going to college, um, got my degree in interpreting. And then it's like the minute I graduated college, and I was a non-traditional student. I didn't graduate college till I was like 35. Mm -hmm. uh, the minute I graduated, I, the writing bug just hit me again so hard. And I thought, you know what? I just need to try. I need to try this. It's, it, this is clearly not going away. I write constantly. I would write instead of doing my homework, you know, and that sort of thing. And uh, so I just started seriously writing. And the first uh, manuscript I wrote was historical romance because that's my first love. Um, it's under my bed and will probably always be there. Um, <laughs> but it's my sister's favorite book that I've ever written. She's- Oh, that's neat though. She loves yeah. it. And, um, <clears throat> and then I wrote the first in a young adult trilogy that came out after Charlie. Um, I wrote the first in that and then I wrote Charlie and that's what sold first, so. Yeah. And that really was your breakout book. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, it, when it finally didn't go, see, the only reason I entered the Golden Heart was to force myself to finish it. Um, I had no delusions of, of finally, I mean, ever. And um, I, I started it and I got to chapter six. I kind of messed with my process. I didn't finish my outline and blah, 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 like I always do. And I got to chapter six and I was stuck. And so it sat there for two years. <clears throat> not going anywhere, not doing anything. And finally I was like, you know what? I'm just going to enter the golden heart because that'll force me to finish it. Cause you have to have a complete manuscript. Mm -hmm. And then of course I didn't finish it. <laughs> and <laughs> before the deadline, I thought maybe I should finish this. So I wrote like crazy, got it finished. Um, and then I thought I missed the deadline. I was so mad because I wasted 50 bucks to enter. <laughs> so mad. And then I thought I missed the deadline 
And this friend told me, she said, no, you still have two more days. You need to overnight it. And I said, well, that's going to be another 50 bucks. I'm not going to waste my money. And she said, no, you have to, or you're going to get in trouble. So looking back, what were they going to do? Send the, <laughs> I, who entered? <laughs> yeah, but I was scared to death. I don't know. <laughs> I got it already, got it sent off. And this was back in the day when you had to send it all out, you know, and, and overnighted it. Forgot, completely forgot about it because I never in a million years thought I would final, ever, ever. I thought it broke all the rules. There's just no way. It's not really romance. Um, and then I got the call that I'd finaled. And that's how I got my agent, went to Nashville, ended up, um, not Nashville, I'm sorry, D.C. That was in D.C., um, ended up winning. Uh, we had within one week, we had like five housing houses bidding on it. So it wow. was a true fairy tale. Like it was just like this huge whirlwind. It was just so cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what year, what year was that? That Diana? was nine. Oh, nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So oh nine, and then it actually didn't come out until, uh, February, 2011. Um, and I think, you know, obviously I was a new writer. They wanted to make sure I could deliver the next three book or the next couple of books. Cause we sold three books right off the bat. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what happened. And, and, uh, I, I just left out. I got Jennifer Enderlin from St. Martin's press, who is now the president. And so I was the one that everybody hates because I got the, the top editor and so I got anything I wanted. <laughs> so I was this friend. I was a little kid on the block and everybody hated me. And <laughs> Somehow I did not care. I was very happy. <laughs> yes, I don't I, I don't think I would have cared either. Yeah. Big deal. <laughs> right. I and, have to read to you um, Michelle Diaz's comment because I just think it's so hysterical. She thinks, and this is about Betwixt, she said, I think my two favorite parts of the story are, one, the phone call about how much lack of action Defiance's vagina has, <laughs> and two, finding out that the grandma is having sex with the sheriff mirror style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, how am I going to pull that off? How would they do that? <laughs> It yeah. worked. It totally worked. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and I love that moment where she's talking to the grandma on the computer, and then all of a sudden, like the grandma moves or something, and she starts to realize, oh wait, this she what? You know, she's really real. You know, and I could just totally so see that. that yeah. And the grandmother tries to make it like yeah. oh, no, it's not real. <laughs> right. And didn't that kind of feel like an old bewitched moment? Like, yes, so we're, yeah, we're all about your age too. We're we're all <laughs> right there too. So we've all we all watch Bewitched. Yeah. So that to me kind of felt like you know something that Aunt Clara would have done or something. You know, like that kind of felt like a bewitched kind of moment right there for me. I loved that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we have another question: Is what is your favorite part of the writing process? Um, yeah. I love <laughs> typing the end. Yes, <laughs> I love outlining, but it's it's like it's like a puzzle. I feel like it's a puzzle, and I'm not great with puzzles. <laughs> so it takes me a while. I have to fit all the pieces together. Um, but I do love just coming up with, uh, especially because I always have mysteries, coming up with the mystery and, and that sort of thing. And then I love rewriting. I don't love the mm. first draft, right. but I love rewriting, going back through and rereading it and just tweaking things. That's probably my favorite part. That's mine too, because I feel like that's when we make our books pretty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Making it pretty, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have you ever had writer's block? So not, not true writer's block. I do believe that there is true writer's block. And I believe that it is from either a traumatic event or, um, you know, somebody has died in your family, somebody close to you. I mean, I do really believe that there are emotional blocks, but for me, if I'm stuck, I'm just, my story's just gone in the wrong direction. 
So that's all it is. And so I just have to step back, go for a walk, you know, uh, figure out what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> And I have a, another question. Tracy Bell asked, do you prefer books to read or to listen to on audio? I actually would rather uh, listen to audio. Oh. I do really? a lot of audio books because I travel a lot. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and so I really got used to audio books and I just love audio books. So yeah, that's my favorite. And speaking of which, the Betwixt series, so it's indie, but my agent mm -hmm. wrote me and she said, we have some interest in the audiobooks. Would you be oh, yeah. yeah, would you be willing, willing to let us handle that? And I'm like, of course. And so they just sold to Tantor. So oh, like, oh, in yeah. Really? yeah. 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 Um, so tell us a little bit about the about how you felt doing your your first indie and kind of some of the differences like so I'm a hybrid and tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the differences that you found in that. Um, for me, it was basically just this very steep learning curve on all of the indie stuff that, that you don't have to think about as a traditional author, like metadata and, and uh, formatting. And I'm like, I, I think I, to this, I realized I might be a little bit of a control freak because I wanted to learn the formatting myself. You know, I have friends who are like, oh, I don't do it. I let my friend, I use Vellum and it's so freaking easy. It's like nothing, oh, wow. you know? And, and once you learn it, it's just a breeze. Um, and, but just learning it and getting it up and I'm scared to death. And when I hit that publish button, I was just so scared. And what we did was all 13, we didn't have, we had no pre-orders for, for the first books of all 13 books in the Fab 13. And we just uploaded them that day. I was the last one to get mine up. I was so scared. I was shaking. I was like, this is so, what if it's wrong? What if it doesn't work? But it all worked out fine. And, and um, yeah, so it, I think there's just, there is a very steep learning curve at first. But once you get it, it's a breeze. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was it. We had another reader ask, what would be your advice for an aspiring author? You know, I think everybody gives the same advice. But I, the, I think one of the best things that I ever did, of course, I'm always, I still to this day, I always take classes. I just signed up yeah, for a class you. last night. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you can ever stop learning because there's always mm -hmm. stuff. But I think like one of the best things you can do is take your favorite book and analyze it. Mm -hmm. To me, that's just one of the best things you can do. Just look at it, highlight different parts. Like, why did you like that part? And really think about why. What did you like about it? Um, and then do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do that in your own books. And uh, yeah, that's that's my best advice. <laughs> you know, Drinda, I heard about you from Margie Lawson. Oh, yep, I take mm -hmm. actually what I just signed up for another Margie, <laughs> a webinar is what I signed up for. Yeah, and that's where I heard about you and that's when I first, I read your, the first Charlie book was because I had gone to an immersion with Margie and she just told your story about how you had, I believe emailed her and just thanked her. She didn't even know who you were. You hadn't even done like an immersion or anything. You just took, you know, her packets, I think it was or something. <laughs> Yeah, I got her because I was like, okay, how do you write emotion? <laughs> and I went online and she had a packet and on writing emotion. I'm like, okay, I'll get that. And I'm not kidding. I, it changed. I it changed. My life. It really did. Yeah, they do. Her, her stuff does. It's and I would tell anybody aspiring out there who is listening, you need to check out Margie Lawson. You really do. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, just, I know that it helped me get published. I know. And so I just wrote her and, and just thanked her. And then she came back with, what? You know, she's like, what's going on? So I sent her the book and I told her all this, that I had won the Golden Heart and I just sold and all this stuff. And and she was just very, she was so excited and so happy. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have another reader ask, um, and I'm sorry, I can't see your name, um, but it's, do you listen to music when you're writing? I do. I didn't used to. I used to have to have total silence. Um, but now I listen quite often to soundtracks. 
I can't have mm. with words because then I type the words. <laughs> Me too. I do that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so I do, and I my favorites are um, Firefly. The Firefly soundtrack is awesome to write to. Um, oh. the Pirates of the Caribbean, Last of the Mohicans is amazing. Oh my oh, God, I love that one. It's yeah, so I love that one. Good. It's so good. Um, and believe it or not, How to Train Your Dragon is one of my favorites. Mm. Music is amazing. So yeah, that's what I do. I listen to soundtracks. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of soundtracks, which movie is your favorite go-to movie? Uh, oh my goodness! It, so if you are talking, I have so many. There's so many. Um, animated is going to be How to Train Your Dragon. It's just okay. my favorite animated movie. I, I love it so much. Um, gosh, I don't know. I I get very hooked on movies. I love. Um, I just started. I'll get hooked on a movie and I'll watch it like three or four times mm -hmm. in a row. And right now I'm back to a movie called The Foreigner with Jackie Chan. Huh. No, I don't think I've ever seen it. Exactly. Like it didn't, and it's so good. It's about um, the IRA. It's it's based on a short story called The Chinaman. And um, basically it starts out kind of sad because his daughter dies in, in an IRA bombing. And he sets out to figure out who set that bomb. And it's just so good. And I'm not kidding. Wow. Like laugh at Jackie. Or, no, is it Jackie Chan? That's his name. Yeah. Yeah. At Jackie Chan. That man can act. Like it broke my heart. I cried twice in that movie. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now we're all going to have to run out and watch it. it. Oh, God, it's so good. Um, so I definitely highly recommend that one. <laughs> it's very good. Nice. Um, we have another uh, question. And I'm sorry. Sometimes when it comes to Facebook on different pages, I don't, I can't see your name, so I apologize. Do you have any issues with fans when you were out in public or were out in public before the virus started? I, you know, it's so funny because, and I know everyone here is going to. These authors are amazing for all of these people. There are the very, very few handful of authors who, and I'm not talking about the really big ones, I'm like Stephen King, whatever that that you can understand but who get very offended when you come up and gush over them. Okay. I freaking love gushing. <laughs> <laughs> we love gushing. If you want to cry, I've had people cry. I've had this girl kept hugging me and hugging. She would not like stop hugging me. And I hugged her back because it's so like, I just love it that, I, that you can affect somebody that much. Yeah. You know? And just, and the stories they tell you about how this got them through chemo or, oh. you know, this one woman came up and oh, just told me how she was so suicidal. And then she read the Charlie books and she said, it literally changed my life. I mean, how do you, how do you not appreciate that? Right. Like, mm. Problems with fans. If you want to come up and hug me and gush, I don't even, even in the pandemic, I don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gosh, all you want. I have no problem with that. But you know what? Also, Dorinda, that's like such a sign of how you touch people's souls when you do this. It, it's just amazing. And it's such an honor. People do mm -hmm. it's an honor. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So, so for the rest of us, we'll finally know we've arrived when somebody comes up to us crying <laughs> to meet us. <laughs> No. It's not happened for me yet. Yeah, it <laughs> not yet. I, I have a hard time believing that, but it, it, it. But Abby, somebody did tattoo like some of your words on I her. Yeah, somebody did. Yeah, Carol did a tattoo of the beginning of my book. That's so. very cool. <laughs> that is very and and again, how amazing is that? I have um, several people have sent me pictures of their tattoos, and I'm like. This one did the most amazing Charlie Davidson tattoo. It's it's on my Facebook page. It is just stunning, and I, it's it's such an honor. Yeah, and okay. now forever, forever. There's I know that's what's really cool, knowing that it's there forever. Your words yeah. are there forever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Carol, for doing that. If you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just commented saying they just watched a movie called, and I have to say, I just saw this movie and it's fabulous. The Train to Busan. Um, it's a zombie movie. Have you seen it? Yes. Yes. Very oh, good. It's one of the best movies I've ever seen. It is very good. It's amazing. And I love zombie anything. 
I have a zombie YA that I'm working on. Of course, that's along with other 127 other projects. I'm working on. But um, again, I apologize for the sound. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I do love zombie anything. I'm a zombie girl. <laughs> you know what else is good that zombie is uh it's called Warm Bodies. Oh, great movie. Love that it. was very good. Good. The zombie's the hero. Well, kind of. I mean, yeah. 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 Great movie. I just love the premise of it. It's so mm -hmm. good. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And Michelle Byfield asks, have you ever been approached about making any of your books into a movie or TV series? Oh, constantly. So you know, the very cool thing, Charlie actually sold before the first book came out. So oh. Charlie sold to CBS. Um, they had it for three years and it just never went into production for as things things happen. Warner Brothers bought it right after that, they had it for three years. Then CBS had it again and it just never goes, to, people keep buying it, but it never goes into production. And people are like, yeah, but you're getting free money. I'm like, I don't care. I don't even care about the money, just produce it. You know, I just want it out there. Um, but I will say that Sunshine, I can't say Sunshine sold to a major television network. That's all I can say. And we finally, wow. literally last week, after a year of negotiation, I can't believe this stuff takes forever. We finally signed the contract. So, oh my God. Congratulations. That's so Great. awesome. I have goosebumps about that. That's cool. <laughs> we go into production. For those who don't know, it's, I have the bookmark, A Bad Day for Sunshine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. I'm so happy for you, Brenda. That's great. Oh, yeah. So exciting. And I just want to uh, say hi to people that are uh, commenting, Karen and Teresa and Tracy and Christine and Lisa. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I we really appreciate you guys hanging out here and chatting with us when you make sure that, you know, we see you, Grace, and... <laughs> And and the comments come in really quickly from all these different Facebook pages. So if we miss it, we're, we apologize. We're just trying to keep up with them all. So, but we love that you're all here. That we just love it. Thank you. So so I had my own question. Um, the beginning of every chapter has a little like T-shirt or meme or uh, something. Uh, now, do you find these online? Do you make them up? Where do they come from? I wish I was that clever. No, they're for, they're real. <laughs> you're pretty clever. <laughs> Happened with, with Char I started that with Charlie, um, and I wanted something at the beginning of each chapter, but I couldn't figure out what I wanted. And then I thought, well, what if I put like, because I have all these T-shirts, and and this was before memes, believe it or not, I had all these T-shirts and bumper sticker type things, and um, I was like, I wonder if I could put that on there. And so I contacted a copyright lawyer and all these people just to make sure, and they said, yeah, yeah, you can. You can't copyright that few of words. Um, so I was like, okay. So I did it not knowing for 100% if I could, but apparently, I mean, I haven't been sued. Knock on wood. <laughs> and yeah, so, and then I just kept it going. And, and I do the same thing. I do something similar in um, the Sunshine books. And then obviously in Betwixt, I did it in Betwixt. So I think that that's just going to kind of be my thing. I, I started it, so I'm like, I get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have problems finding something or? No, I have, you know, and what's funny now is that um, I have like a whole file folder just full of, of memes and, and sayings and everything. And now I have people sending to, them to me all the time. <laughs> and so it's right, I them into that folder. And then, then when it comes time, I write the whole, what I do is I write the book from, I don't break it into chapters. So I break it into chapters. It's the last thing I do. Um, and then I just try to find a meme or something that kind of goes with the chapter, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's what perfectly I perfectly match. They really do. Oh, thank you. I have made up a couple. I've made up a few, but not very many. Not very many. Wow. I love um, them. They're a lot of fun. Someone just asked, if Betwixt was made into a movie, who would you want to play the lead roles? Do you have any clue about that? Have you thought about it? Um, Betwixt? No. Well, you know... I kind of fashioned her off. So when I first came up with Betwixt, I, I binge read, binge read, I binge watch um, television shows. So like when I'm writing, I'll watch like one or two episodes of something a day and I'll binge watch a whole thing. So I was watching um, 
white collar. Hmm. I've never seen it. And it's amazing. It's so good. Yeah. And do you guys remember Tiffany Amber Thiessen? Yep. She was kind Saved of- Saved by the bell. Yes. She was kind of my inspiration for Defiance. Yeah. Yeah. So, but as far as who would play her, I don't know. I don't know. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I don't know. If, if, as far as Roan, it would definitely be that Creepman guy. If he can act. <laughs> <laughs> and we will get everyone that, that picture. I, this has been so much fun. Can you believe that our time is up so quickly? I can't believe it. No, I can't believe it. It's just crazy. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. We really appreciate it. And, you know, um, everybody, sorry if we didn't get all your questions. We tried our best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Bye, Dorinda. Bye, Dorinda. So we're going to announce our next book. Are we oh, no, wait, wait, wait. We got author questions. We have for... questions. Oh, author questions. That's right. Okay. We're, so, we're so organized, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for any of you who this might be your first time watching, one thing that we kind of do among the four of us is we quiz you on how well you know each of us. <laughs> So every month we have a qu four questions that we ask and you have to pick which author belongs with which question. And the poll goes up in the Isn't It Romantic book club group. So if you wanna participate in the poll, you have to join that particular group in order to do it. Um, but it's really super fun because you get to find out a little bit about us. Um, you get to guess and then we'll tell you eventually like who the real person is. So. Question number one um, is, which author as a child got the flu on Christmas Eve for four years in a row? Okay. This is question number two. Which author was supposed to be born on Christmas but came a month early? Question number three. Which author's husband proposed on Christmas Eve and the ring he gave her was very small? But she loved it dearly because they were both very poor and very much in love. And question number four, which, uh, which author was a Christmas baby and she was delivered by a C-section then presented to her mom in a bright red Christmas stocking that clashed with her strawberry blonde hair? Now, the, I put this poll up on our The Isn't It Romantic book club as soon as we're done here today. And you guys can guess your little hearts out. And then about Sunday, I'll put the real answers in the comments. Okay. Yep. So there was a little bit of a theme there. I don't know if anyone noticed that we had a little bit of a theme um, of a Christmas theme. And we also wanted to let you guys know that for because of the holidays and Thanksgiving and everything, we're actually our November book is going to be pushed out a tiny bit to the beginning of December. So we'll give you guys a little extra time to um, have Thanksgiving and a little extra time to read so that our book will be December. So it was a little bit of a Christmas theme. So. so... <laughs> oh my God, this hat. <laughs> <laughs> our next book is Holiday Home Run by Priscilla Olivares. Yay! so exciting you guys are gonna love this book and you are going to love her and um can't wait to share that with all of you oh my god happy i love it <laughs> <laughs> we will keep this um lot this up the contest up until sunday you have until sunday to comment and we will pick a winner from all of you guys thank you so much all of you Thanks appreciate it bye everybody bye